Hi there. Uh, today we have a new addition to the lab. Um, I've been uh, browsing around flea markets and uh, online uh, auction sites for a while looking for a uh, new oscilloscope and I actually stumbled across one at the flea market the other day. And uh, <coughs> I, uh, I caught the bus there and, uh, and I saw it and I was thinking, nah, this guy must want at least at least a grand for it and uh, so you know I went up and asked him how much and turns out he wanted 250 bucks for it uh, you'll be surprised in a minute when you see it so I offered him 200 and I wangled him down since so he didn't have any probes of it uh, yeah he took 200 for it and uh, and now I got it and struggled home on the bus with it but I got it uh, so yeah so let me uh, let me show you what I got yeah, this is the uh, the Sencore model SC3 uh, 3100. Sorry. Uh, this is actually 100 megahertz scope. It's in uh, it's an amazing condition. Um, like I said, unfortunately, it didn't have the probes, but um, but I've used my own. But you'll notice there's an LCD screen on the top left. <clears throat> now this can do a, a number of things. It, Using this, it can measure current, and uh, it could be used as a um, an ohmmeter or a continuity tester. And uh, it beeps quite loud on it when it does. But also, it can be used for uh, taking measurements. It does voltage measurements, but I found the voltage measurements going through here, which comes with the the special uh, Sencor probes that uh, that you really need. Um, but also, I can uh, actually even get a close up on that. Ooh. Does that do it? Yeah, perfect. Now, you see, you got frequency counter, uh, DBM, Ooh. Do it. Uh. You got voltage peak to peak. Now, these you can do using the uh, through the probes. But I think the other, the DCV and ACV, they uh, they need the uh, well, actually the ACV if it goes through the probes. But the DC volts, you must have the uh, the mini banana plug connected in. So I might have to make a separate set of loads, separate set of leads for those. <clears throat> but also, there's also the delta measurements, which I will be uh, I'll be showing shortly. Which you can uh, you can use to um, measure wavelengths and stuff, which is uh, it's pretty handy. Um, and it all comes on up there. And this is a dual scope, uh, dual 100 megahertz uh, oscilloscope. And uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's get it all set up and fired up, and we'll have a deeper look. Okay, we'll have a start having a look at the uh, at the internals of this. Um, <clears throat> now, I would like to point out that the the probes have a different uh, kind of calibration. The the proper Sencor codes have a, a code. The proper Sencor probes have a uh, a strange calibration for like at, at ten times and stuff. So my probes right now are um, a set. I wonder if you can see it from here. Yeah, let's see if I got some light on. Ugh. Right, I got them set one times. I've only got one probe on at the moment. Anyway, I plug it into the uh, into the slot on there. <coughs> some light off, so it's easy to see. Okay. So I got it on the uh, the probe compensation, <coughs> and <coughs> it's currently set to DC volts, which takes the, uh, <coughs> the voltage from this point here, which I don't have it hooked up for that right now. But if I press the VPP button here, you'll notice on the screen it's uh, it's showing the VPP level of this through the probe uh, but on the volts per division 
I actually have it set to 10. Uh, 10 volts per division. But you notice there's 1 volt per division. It's, uh, it's not really... Okay. <laughs> it's such a pain showing a... Uh, this display. <clears throat> um... Okay, so anyway, I found that's the only way I can really work with this, with my probes, because I don't have the proper probes, is I have to divide what it says on here by 10, and use it on one times, and uh, everything should be fine. So if I switch to 2 volts per division, that's fine. So if I go down to, if I go to, nope. If I go down to one volt per division, it's basically uh, basically about uh, 100 millivolts per division, which isn't so. Uh, five volts per division, it should be 0.5 volts per division. So yeah, that works right. Oop, knock things off my table here. All right. But yeah, all, all seems uh, very well done on here. And there's the frequency counter. Which gives it 0.0361 kilohertz. And uh, we've got the AC volts, which is done through this probe again. And there's uh, the DBM, which uh, for me, I cannot get my head around DBMs. I've done several years of it at college and I just never fully understood it. Um, okay, but what's remarkable about this scope, which it really makes it worth it, well, the fact that it's uh, it's got dual trace, and you got the beam finder, woo. You've also got the, the vector modes and that's so XY mode and addition subtraction mode. Well, addition and you can invert the signal. Um, is up here we have the delta measurements. See if I wanted to do volts peak to peak, uh, measure volts peak to peak at different parts of the waveform. I press this button, you'll notice there's a change. And then the beginning part of the waveform. So I can select where. It should tell me, and then, then set the end. Okay. Doesn't give me too much information with that, but anyway, I can uh, I can measure the time difference between two different parts. So if I measure it from there to there, okay. So we got a uh, 955.2 microseconds. Microseconds. One over that gives us the. Uh, 1.046 kilohertz. So go to the frequency. And it figures out for you. So that's that's pretty bang on. Now I do the voltage difference from the waveform. As you can see, uh, okay. This. I just spot here DC volts. This dot corresponds to the voltage read at that specific point in the waveform, which is a really powerful, uh, uh, powerful feature I find. So I'm looking forward to using this with my. Uh, my uh, computer development. My uh, 
newly introduced the Z80 computer project. <clears throat> so I'm going to just gonna pull this out just a bit so get a bit more into focus on the view. Yeah, anyway, so we also have the uh, the inputs here that's at uh, ohms and uh, DC amps input so you can use it for uh, measuring resistance it's measuring the resistance of the cable and I can pass ohm zero and it'll, zip, and it'll, uh, it'll zero it out and there's also continuity tester and not super reactive but and also the uh, it's got a current uh, sense which I don't have anything cocked up right now to uh, to show that but yeah anyway so I can mess around with it with uh, different settings for that but yeah I'm, I'm quite happy with this so two hundred dollars worth of goodness I have uh, had a quick look around on on eBay and stuff and people are selling these things for like two thousand dollars in worse condition than this one's in this one's in perfect condition and Look, I pull this out, and it, and it still has the uh, uh, the simplified operating instructions, and you know it's it's in perfect condition. And the person selling it must not know what it was. Anyway, your standard uh, trigger input, and uh, and there's a, a channel B input, the X vector. Um, currently, I don't have too much to show running on this, but yeah, I'm uh, I am very impressed with this. Uh, expand, I'm not sure. It's Ten times expand for the. Horizontal and the vertical will invert. Only the channel A does, but not. Well, I think that's to do with the uh, the math function down here. When you add, so it turns it into subtract rather than just add. Maybe like the beam finder. Okay, but down here underneath each channel, we have a um, a switch here that I can switch between 20 megahertz bandwidth and 100 megahertz bandwidth. Yeah, on regular scopes you have an option to limit to 20 megahertz, so we have that on here. But considering a lot of uh, digital scopes these days, when you buy them, you can get them in. 50 megahertz 75 megahertz versions and stuff this thing being 100 megahertz is just amazing and um, it's been a while since I've used a, uh, a CRT scope but you know I uh, I originally trained back in the day on the an old Hameg 20 megahertz scope and uh, I've been spoiled for that college using uh, digital ones over the past half decade so so yeah it's a bit of a step back but you know it's it's amazing it's uh, it's a really really good scope and uh, <clears throat> it's something I've been really needing in my lab for quite a while like sure fair enough there's no um, there's no USB on it there's no, well, I was going to say there's no auto features, but um, but this scope actually does have auto features on it, actually. It's not a storage oscilloscope, but if I go to auto. Okay. 
just want to do auto there, but there's uh, auto scaling. Let's see if we can. Oop. There we go. There, there is. Sorry, I was uh, looking wrong. But yeah, that is now auto time scaled and auto vault scaled. And uh, it does a really good job. Now, concerning the vaults inputs by the probes, just should get slide back on. Not super good con position for filming. Oh. Princess in the way. I gotta get a better lighting set up. Okay. I don't really see it with this, I'm afraid. But I will try my best to point it out and explain. I suppose this is the most visible one. But it's a, it's a mini banana plug connection. Now, I may make a, a set of probes to, uh, to go in here. So I believe from here and here could do the measurements for me. This wouldn't fit in, would it? No, so yeah, it's definitely a mini banana plug. I could alternatively open it up and uh, and fit these type of pro uh, plugs in there, but I. Uh, but to be honest, I, I I really do not want to mutilate this thing. It's it's a beautiful scope. <clears throat> let's uh, let's see if we can. Get a way of it to reading the. Uh, uh, the voltage. Now let's get some wire. you in there, easy bolts, let's um, let's try something safe, okay I'm gonna use the earth from the scope because that's what it'd be using anyway and we're gonna look at that DC volt at the top okay 12.49 DC volts yeah uh, well you got to keep in mind the um, the probes would be calibrated for 10 times and I'm running it at one time so yeah well it, I'll just have to um, remember to <laughs> to divide that by 10 uh, from now on uh, unless I make some kind of uh, plug an adapter that will that will do the divisions and everything for me but uh, yeah anyway so this is the uh, the Senko model uh, SC3100 okay so yeah so that's the uh, the Senko uh, 100 megahertz scope uh, what I'll do is I'll I'm gonna bring up some uh, some literature now for you uh, you'll see here's the uh, it's an advertisement for it, the SC3100 Auto Tracker. So it's auto range in time, ba time based and attenuators. Integrated measurement for all circuits uh, parameters. Yeah, that's that's pretty much right. I uh, I think that's right. And uh, so yeah, so let's uh, let's have a look at the specifications. It's got a calibration accuracy of plus or minus 3% at 1 kilohertz. Uh, normal, all the trigger circuits is normal. Auto track and digital test DV, DC volts. Provides direct reading of DC, DC voltage on selected channel. But yeah, like I said, that needs to go through the, uh, the special um, 
the special probes. I think I might, um, yeah, I might build an adapter for that. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's got the DBM measurements from uh, PPV sine wave measurements. It's delta peak to peak, delta time, uh, delta DC volts. Yeah, DC volts in respect to ground, so that's good. And the, it's got the ohm meter on it, up to one, 100 mega ohms. Uh, continuity, DC current, up to 199 amps. That's a lot of bloody amps for, uh, for that. <coughs> uh, supplied with two times uh, 39G292 10 times low capacity probes with 3 inch ground 12 inch ground and ground insulator ring one each a 39G295 DC voltage probe so yeah so you could buy those <clears throat> but yeah Anyway, so that was the uh, the quick look at the uh, the Senko uh, model SC thirty one hundred, um, the latest addition to my lab, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it was a much needed piece of equipment uh, that will allow me to continue forward to to do things. I think one of the first things I'm actually going to be doing is to looking into rebuilding a uh, a function generator. Um, <clears throat> I got some some old chips. I think it XL something something chip. Uh, let's see if I still have the. No, I don't have the information up still. Anyway, I got some old function generator monolithic chips. They uh, they don't work well. They don't make them anymore. But I still got a few from leftover function generator projects from the college, and uh, I'm just going to rebuild them and use them probably put them in a desktop case anyway that's for a different video but uh but for now yeah thanks for watching and uh i'll see you again soon okay goodbye